Hey everyone, this is CJ Carter, aka Terp CJ, and we are going to be looking at Kerbal Space Program 2. This is the first day of release, and I kind of wanted to explore what it was going to be like to use what today is kind of a sort of ordinary computer. I'm using an Intel i7 9700. It's running at 3 gigahertz, and I got 32 gigabytes of RAM. And I'm running a GTX 1660 Ti. So this is overall just a little bit under what their minimum spec is. So we'll get to see if something like this can run KSP2. The plan starting out is to mostly run a vanilla KSP2, but I am going to change one thing. I'm going to go into settings on input, and I'm going to change the activate next stage from space to numpad star. I've always done this because I have a habit of hitting spacebar when I don't mean to. And it's just a lot safer for me to get staging very far away from any sort of sudden thumb movements of my left hand. So with that done, go back to the game and we'll just start a new game as single player. Okay, we're going to start a new campaign. Difficulty normal. Campaign is going to be uh, one small fail or curable kind. Uh, let's Get a nice little flag here. This looks very space forcey. Base color. We'll keep kind of gray. The accent color will do. We're going to do orange. I was going to do blue, but let's contrast the blue of the sign with a bit of orange, kind of a flat orange. I think that'll work. It's going to be the first time user experience, so we're going to see a lot of uh, the other stuff showing up. So I have seen other reactors to this. And we'll just start the campaign. Here we go. I mostly want to see how this is going to run on my computer. I think what the slowdown is going to be is a lot of this foliage. So I'm probably going to have to reduce that as low as possible. But like I said, I'm going to be running default to start off with. And we're just going to, you know, let's just go to the launch pad and just launch something. Go to launch pad one. And we'll just pick a stock K1. We'll see what happens. Curious what's down here. Fair enough. I've other, seen other people just launch straight away and they complain about not being able to get the crew right or anything. So let's go into edit vehicle and see what happens. Probably just go into the VAB and it'll be just like I started editing. Yeah, it's pretty much what I thought. Okay, so have this. I have to figure out. my Kerbals are. 
I can put a lot in here. You know, let's start with Bill. Just for fun, let's start with Bill. Or is everybody here? Yeah, we'll find out. So we'll launch. Now with the flight cluster, I'm going to get this kind of wrong sometimes because when I watch reactors, I keep mixing these two up, but I'll get it. And is all we're going to try to do is just do a really simple launch and get up to orbit. I don't know how well that's going to happen, but we'll see. And we'll, let's see if, let's see, escape. Let's see what we can do with settings. I actually want to see what my frame rate is. So I'm going to turn that on. There we go. Okay, I'm currently at about 25 FPS, which is not too bad, considering. So, here we go. Rockets full up. Going to... SAS is on. And here we go. Here we go. Rocketing forth like there's no tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna turn east a little bit. As we go through the clouds, it's a lot more sensitive than I'm used to. Got ready to separate the boosters. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, I'm up 14,000 meters, which is quite a bit more than I would like before I start the turn. And I'm at 18 FPS. Let's get a little closer. There we go. Okay. And we'll stop there because my apoapsis is 110. And I am up ridiculously high. I could have launched that a heck of a lot better, though, to be fair, I haven't played KSP in quite a while. Never mind KSP2. So as we're going up, let's see what views we have. We have Chase, we have Horizon, Celestial, Capture, Body, Flight. Okay. We're over a minute to apoapsis, so we got plenty of time. We don't have to rush. And I'm not expecting things to work very well at all. I played KSP1 very early in its development. And so I recognize that this is very much like a beta program. It's barely out of alpha. So I'm not expecting things to go well at all. And that is fine with me. 
So we're up to about 30 frames, which is good. Not doing too bad. Let's change camera. Chase. I want to get the other side. Guess I can't get to the other side. Horizon. Celestial, which is overhead, capture. There we go. I like this angle. It's a good angle. So we're approaching apoapsis. So I should probably get myself lined up. Get the burn started. That's good. There we go. Fuel's almost out. Get ready for staging. Out, stage, go. Go, cowboy, go. We should have plenty of fuel. Oh yeah, we got more than enough fuel. And almost there. There we go, and we're in orbit. It's not a circular orbit, but what are you going to do? And if you want proof, here we are. Not circular, but not too bad. Uh, still have a fair amount of fuel left. Just kind of poking around here, seeing what's the what. I have 1334 Delta V. So, you know, why don't we see if we can do an orbit around the moon. Set you as target. And let's see how we how this will work. So now this is kind of getting used to the new interface. So this is going to take me around the mun back home. I hope. 
and trying to look around and see how much delta V this is going to take. This should take me around the Mon. A lot of electricity, a lot of mono repellent. It's good. So right now, I want to figure out how much delta V this maneuver is going to take. Oh, required delta V. There it is. 832. I have got more than enough. This is good. Okay, so that being the case, uh, let's just warp to the maneuver and let's get started. Good. We're at the maneuver. And we'll get ready to go. Five, four, three, Two, one, zero. Here we go. It's going to be our first attempt to go around the Mun. Oh, yeah. We're a going. Okay, if I read is stop the burn. Whoops. Told you about my fingers. So now I gotta look at the map. Oops. So we're gonna go retrograde. And I'm going to do a little correction here. There we go. So we get rid of the maneuver node. And I think I saw that we have solar panels, yes. 
I probably should have checked. No, we have batteries. We have passive solar. Let's see, we have active solar. No. No. We're at pretty good clip. Let's see where the mun is. Oh, it should be in view. Somewhere. Okay, let's aim for the target. Oh, that's right, I went right retrograde. That was my mistake. I really should be paying more attention. So here we go. And We're just going to go zoomies. Go here because I don't want to go to zoomies. It's nice. I like it. I'm not too sure how I feel about the sphere of influence. I feel like it's giving me too much information. I was always fine with this, but I understand wanting to get everybody on board. I'll assume this is a shortcut to get to the sphere of influence. No. Here we go. And that is fine. There's the mun. Sphere of influence. Kind of nice to see that Kerbin's an eclipse, almost. You're higher up. So we're just going to kind of go right on by and come back home. Just taking a quick look, see. Look into the cabin. Not much in the way of windows. So over here, really nothing to do. Let's do a quick little EVA, let's see. Things are gonna work. Let's see if there are any lights. There aren't any lights. I just want to see if that worked. 
It said I was out of fuel. That was probably for my jetpack. Let's do that again. It says I have mono propellant. So we're going to just zip on by, as you can see in the map. And boom. Now we're heading back to Kerbin. Here we go. Right now, our periapsis is higher than reentry, so we're going to have to get ourselves going a little ass forward. And get our periapsis to something reasonable. Here we go. It's doing this nice and slow. No reason to go nuts on it. We have plenty of time. And I'll stop it around. 30 or 20 kilometers. And we still got a little ways to go here. But that's, again, fine. We have plenty of time. getting exciting now. We're about to crash into a planet. And we'll stop at about right there. That's good. So our landing is all but guaranteed. We're low enough that we aren't going to skip back out. And that's all we have to do. So enjoy the ride. I guess we're still quite some ways out. But that's fine. I don't want to overshoot because I want to do my stage step at around 100 kilometers. And I like to be oriented with normals. That's nice. We're going to probably land on the other side of KSP. I mean, KSC. But that's fine. Hopefully, it'll still be daylight. It 
It's kind of exciting. You wouldn't expect Bill to be quite this apt. Do we have RCS on this? I don't think so. Okay. Anyway, I tend to go with normal uh, because this way, when I do my stage step, I this side is going to go that way, this side is going to go that way, so there's very little chance of them colliding with each other once we enter the atmosphere. Little something I learned very early on. But you don't want to separate too soon because you still need to have the charged batteries. Okay, and we're down to about 18 frames per second. And I think we're about right. We can stage step now. There we go. And we're going to go mass backwards. Still not quite getting. Quite the orientations I would like. And I'm going to rotate around a little bit. No, I don't like that view. Okay, we're in the atmosphere now. It's only a matter of time. I'm gonna turn off stability. Use the shape of the craft to keep us stable without any problems. And honestly, so far for a mission like this, this is a very simple mission. I have no complaints. This is very much like Kerbal. I'm sure once I get closer to the ground and have to deal with terrain and the water, my frame rate is going to just totally collapse. But, you know, that's kind of okay. We can deal. Because very early on with KSP-1, there were a lot of performance issues. As we can see here, our periapsis is going down, our apoapsis is going down. So we're very much committed.
I'm really missing the atmospheric effects though. I wish we had a little more camera movement though. And it looks like we're going to land on land. Where are we at? Or maybe not. Nope, I'm thinking not. There we are. Wow, it's going to be close. Nope, water landing. Excellent. Let's release our chutes. Now this is a spacecraft I do, I usually put on drogues. So I like to slow down without having to worry about the mains. But I don't think that's a problem at present. Uh, the clouds are nice. I think they're a little soft. I'd like a little more hard edge on the clouds. At least from this perspective, things are a little soft. Not just with the clouds, land too, but that'll sharpen as we get closer. I didn't check to see when the clouds, sorry, when the parachute was going to open. Probably not until 1,200 feet or so, ground. Ooh, we're going to go right through this cloud. And our frame rate is 22, not too bad. Not getting much in the way of stuttering. We're not dropping too many frames. And 1,200. No, 900. There we go. Ooh, that's a lot of Gs. Looking at water at 24. Not too bad. Kind of rough seas, though. A lot of white caps. It's kind of nice. Doors are open. You can actually see inside where the parachutes are stored. Which is nice. And while you can see in, there's not much to see except the top of a helmet. But Bill seems happy. Still 300 meters to the ground. So overall, on this very, very simple flight, just a flyby of the month, and a return to Kerbin. This has not been too bad. Like I said, I'm using the default settings, so except for the staging. So if there was going to be an issue on space flight, I probably should have noticed something spectacular, but for the most part, pretty good. I'm sure those people who are using space planes and regular planes 
they're going to have more of an issue. And let's see how deep a hole you carve. Yeah, that could use some work. You're floating. Wow. Look at these seas. My God. Yeah, we got to do something about this. Try to get these to float on top of the water instead of sinking underneath of it all the time. But, you know, I think it'll do. Uh, is there a way to finish this? Seems fine. Vessel landed. And I'm not actually seeing an end to the mission, which is kind of annoying. I can revert to launch, but I don't want to do that. I want to finish the mission. So I guess I have to go to the tracking. Maybe if I right click. And that just gets me the part manager. I have to go to the tracking station and recover, I think. Tracking station. And Kerbal K1 will Nope. Okay. It's a little better. Point up. So focus. Recover. There we go. Okay, and we're back. Okay, I'm gonna try a simple plane that I'm gonna crash because I'm very bad at this. So we'll just do a stock Eris K2. And we'll launch. Okay, here we are. Break. And start the engine. There we go.
I never fly these on the keyboard. Okay. I didn't die, which is kind of amazing. So, well done. So. Flight report. There really should be a way to recover. Uh, that's obvious, and I'm not seeing one. This is a little annoying. Map tracking. Nope. Just recover from here. All right, so overall, I got to say that this hasn't been too bad. I don't know what some people are expecting. I mean, I would like, there are a lot of things here that I would like improved. I, I'd like to be able to have free camera around the ship. But honestly, everything here works reasonably nice. So yeah, I'm going to keep playing K KSP2 and see how it works out for me. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of problems once I start building my own ships. But just dealing with stock and defaults, I'd say work pretty good. So, yeah, I'm not sad at all that I paid the money to get early access. It's certainly pretty far above what KSP1 was when I started playing that. So I really don't have any complaints. I just want it to get better, and I'm sure it will. So I don't know if I'm going to be posting any more of these videos. But I thought it would be good to have one out there to give a little bit of perspective on the type of machine that this will run on. I still have a lot of playing to do, and I'm looking forward to that. So until next time, this is Terp CJ saying I'll see you. Bye.